Changing colors with color harmony is our topic today on Luminar Coffee Break. Let's see what we can accomplish in 10 minutes or less, starting now. Hello, everyone. I'm glad you could be here today. So what we're going to do today, and let me share my uh, desktop a little bit for you, is we, we use this image, this windmill image. We used it on a breakout session on a Friday, and I'll let you guys edit the images. And some of the edits you came up with were absolutely amazing. You went down a totally different path. While you were editing, I looked at it, and I, and I tried to recreate the colors that I saw. And in Photoshop, I'd have, I used, I'd have to go in and painstakingly paint each one of these um, windmills right here in between. And it was horrible. So I wanted to see if there was a way I could do it just using sliders because the purpose of that is now I can make a batch, I could batch process this and apply it to the entire series of images, all right? So instead of going through from start to finish, I'm gonna show you where, we, where I started, but I really wanna get into the color harmony and the toning tools. So I started with, in fact, down here is where I started with uh, the development tool. And this is what we had, actually. This is what we had originally. Horrible shot. Use develop to repair the image to make sure that it was properly exposed and ready for processing. Then from there, I'm just going to move up the ladder, enhance AI, added a new sky, uh, dropped a little structure in there. Uh, with the color, and by the way, with the color, it's always best to adjust the exposure first and then deal with saturation and vibrancy after that. Because keep in mind, if you, when you work with exposure, if you make something a little bit darker, you're changing the saturation of the colors. All right. Now, I got all that set. Let's go right here to toning. Here it is before. And after, look at that. So without me having to do anything, without me having to, to lift a brush, because once we start using the brush for masking, now it's gonna be a lot harder to, to create a, a batch process for this. All right, now that it rendered, what I wanna do is this. I'm gonna just reset it so you can see how I, I started it. So here's the original image. And I'm just gonna give it just an arbitrary amount just to get me started. And here I can adjust the shadows and the highlights separately. But I wanted to deal with the shadows first. Saturation. And again, I'm going to just give it an arbitrary amount. And now with you and saturate with the U slider, this is where I can go through and start changing the color. So, you know, if, if I wanted a little bit more blue, it's here. If I want to get that brown old um, look that I saw when I was there, I'll move here. And if you notice back down in this area here, same concept, I can sit there and pick the color. And I actually like that there, but notice what it did. It took care of the, the windmill. You know, it took care of the, uh, the in-betweens, all the structure of the actual windmill itself. And then if you want, we can go to highlights, I didn't for this image, but let's just check it out. If I did highlights, which I know is in the sky, the issue we're going to deal with, it, it, right there, is I want to make sure I don't change the windmill. Well, since the windmill has a lot of shadow to it, that's fine. But for the for the sky, I know there's a lot of highlights in that sky. So maybe I will use it. Oh, look at that. All right, so I originally didn't go down this path, but now I did. Look at that. So before and then after. So we had that set. Now that was toning. And of course, we dropped a vignette in here. So let me back out a little bit. And the purpose of the vignette was just to draw a little more attention to the windmill itself, and I did that with inner light. 
So we chose the subject, which would be the windmill. Gave it a very, very light setting. I don't want to go overboard with it. In fact, I'm going to dial it back a little bit. And with that inner light, look what it's doing. Let's just put it right about here. Before, after. You see, it's just that little, that just a little bit, but it makes a difference. All right, and that's what we're looking for here. Then, <laughs> dur during the dur during the uh, breakout session, somebody made a comment. Well, maybe we should use Vanelli's favorite tool, which of course is uh, where did it go? The the dramatic tool. So, and I went, hey, I didn't even think about using that. So, because Photoshop didn't have that tool years ago when I edited this image. But let's look at the dramatic tool. Here's before. I'm going to let it render. After. All right? But the trick here is don't forget that when we're doing dramatic, don't forget to click down here with the brightness and saturation because... Originally, it's de de desaturates. Let's see, it's usually right about here. It usually desaturates the, the entire uh, scene. So I don't want that. I want to bring it out just a little bit here. And then now I can adjust the brightness. Either bring it out more, bring it back. But you know what? I'm going to like it right about there. All right. Now on to the color harmony. I went in this order here, not because, oh, wow, so that's the secret to doing all this? No, I, I, was, I was experimenting to see what tools would help. And then, of course, Color Harmony came along. And let's do before and after. Just that little extra, I'm going to bring the brilliance out just a little bit more. Look, look what it's doing to the sky. Not a fan of what it's doing to the, to the grass area. So let's see if we can dial that back a bit, way back, just to see. Look at that. You see how it's adjusting, and it's really attacking the sky quite a bit. So I'm going to back this off a little. There we go. And again, before, after. The goal is not to see a night and day difference. Because if you make it look night and day, then it looks totally fake. We, we want that little bit, just that little check um, that we want to apply uh, to the scene. Then <laughs> everyone seemed to erase that sign out. So I thought, what the heck? I might as well do the same thing. It didn't even dawn on me to get rid of that sign. But everyone brought out a great point And they said, look, you know what? We can't we can't read the sign, so you might as well get rid of it. So here it is before, and get rid of the light pole, and after. And then last, I just threw in another uh, instance of the develop tool. Now, the reason why I did that was we talked about this before. Sometimes if you feel you've gone overboard, you, I, I, I want, I'm going to use the develop tool just to bring things back into perspective a little bit. I do wish we had the master slider because that would really, really help us tremendously here. But I am going to dial back some of the saturation or some of the highlights. Then I want to come down here to uh, the colors. And with colors, let's go to an extreme. Here's the desaturate. I'm going to desaturate it, but I'm going to bring it back just a little bit, right about here, and not too much. And then bump up the vibrancy a little bit. And this is where I'm going to play a balancing act. Right about here. Good. And then Yeah, I'm going to pull it back just a little bit more right about here. Now, if that grass is really bothering me, I could, in fact, we'll do it just for the sake of doing it. 
is we'll come in here with the color tool. Now with the color tool, this is where we have HSL, U, saturation, and luminance. And we want to target, put that back. I want to target just the green. So uh, I want to take saturation and let's look, 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 look at that green. Good. So I'm going to pull the green right about to here. Now, in this case, I like where it's, I like it like that. If I wanted those trees to jump out more, this is where, again, you can apply a mask. But remember what I said earlier, the goal was not to use the brush. So I could always go back and uh, use this as a, a good starting point or process all of the images from the set that included this particular uh, windmill. So we have it here. So let's see if it's going to cooperate with us. I'm going to do before and after. Zoom loves chewing up my resources. There we go. So here's before. This is what we started with. And guess what? It was a throwaway shot. I looked at this and thought, you know what? What am I going to do with that? Uh, originally, I bracketed it, and I messed up on the bracketing. And I didn't have enough time to retake the shot. But look what we are able to do with that. A total change guys well thank you so much for joining us and as you can see we have a very colorful group here um, if you want to watch this live or we're on live Monday through Friday you can find us on the insiders all right well guys thanks so much for joining us stick around for the ask me anything segment and I'll see you at the next coffee break